Hey everybody, welcome to this video in our Nagios XI administration series where we are going to cover standard users, non-administrative users. Now this is critically important because as standard users we can give them a lot of power or almost none. The challenge is that because there are no super administrators in Nagios XI, that all administrators are created equally, we want to be very careful about who we would make an administrator. And as such, we want to have a lot of granularity and a lot of control over what standard non-administrative users can do. Let's learn how. Okay, in this section of the video, we're going to cover users generally, and then we're going to cover three specific use cases. A power user, an executive type user, and then a limited user with limited powers. Let's go right here. We're gonna click on manage users on the left sidebar. We're gonna get this page where it's going to list for us all the user accounts on the XI system. And we can edit an account. We can clone an account. We can masquerade as an account. Now this is super handy when you are setting up user permissions, especially for that last group where they have some powers on some objects. When you masquerade as them, you don't have to know their password. You can just go in and it allows you to log in as their account and then you can troubleshoot or see that you have their permissions set up correctly, super handy. You can disable accounts from this screen and you can also delete accounts. So we're gonna go right here, we're gonna add a new user. And so we'll just walk right through this. We will put in our new user here. And then the password, this is supplied. It is a random password. You can change it or not. You can toggle on or off if they have to change it at their next login. You could email the account information to them. Of course, we would want to have um, the information in, in order to be able to do that. From here, we're gonna jump down to the user or admin in security settings. Now we cover admins in another video. So we're gonna focus here on users. We're gonna talk about the power user. So a power user is gonna get all of these boxes checked except for has read-only access. So they can see everything. They can configure and reconfigure everything. They can control all the objects. They can see and control the monitoring engine. They have access to the advanced features and they have API access. So basically, you've given them everything that needs to be done in Nagios XI except for the things that are reserved for administrators, which includes user management and the other items on the administration page that we're covering in this video series. Now, another type of user that you might encounter would be, say, an executive user who, you know, you want to get it set up, but hopefully they don't change anything. Um, and, but they need to see everything. So how do we restrict their usage right? So what we're going to do is we're going to check the box that they can see all the objects. And then we're going to give them read-only access. And not only that, we are going to take them out as a monitoring contact. We're not going to create them as a monitoring contact. And this will disable notifications. So they're not going to be a contact on anything. They're never going to get a notification. But they can see everything and they can't change a single setting, which is about perfect for an executive user. The last use case is the one that's kind of in the middle, and that is, say, for example, you've got a database administrator who needs to be able to control the things within their scope of work and the things in their workflow, but if it's concerning networking equipment, well, there's no reason they should have access to it or be able to change it. So we are, um, we're gonna skip this top one because that one gives a lot of power and we're gonna say that they can configure and reconfigure. And we're also gonna say that they can control all objects. And this is important because it will only allow them to control the objects they're listed as a contact on. So even though it says can control all objects, they can't see all objects and they're only going to be able to see the things they're listed as a contact on, and I'll show you how to list them as a contact on that in a little bit. So um, can they see or control the monitoring engine? That depends on what you want them to be able to do and how much control and ability they need over the items that they're managing. Should they be able to, uh, to access the advanced features? That is another decision that you're gonna have to make. It may help that you can use these question marks that are scattered throughout the interface. It can help you do that. 
and then they may or may not have API access. So that's how you would set up a user that has that needs some amount of power over a certain number of things that you monitor. Again, the big thing is make sure that you know you uncheck this or you don't check that they can see all objects. Now, what can they see? So for the user that can see limited things and control limited things, how do we set up what they can control? Well, we go up to configure and the core config manager. Generally, we would find whatever host or whatever service or whatever host group or service group and we would add them as a monitoring contact. So that would be a quick way to do it. However, it might be that there are a lot of things that they need to manage and you don't want to go through and configure them either by groups or individually. In that case, you can use the bulk modification tool where you can add a contact or remove a contact across a large number of hosts and or services. So now you're up to speed on how to manage non-administrative users in Nagios XI. More videos coming up.